Heartfelt thank you. And it sounds, I'm sorry I don't speak any Hebrew, but I could tell that it's beautiful to see so many colleagues in the field of integrative medicine and also complementary medicine coming together and to share just on offer with each other, their knowledge and their latest innovation. And so I'm I'm delighted to be part of that. And I'm probably addressing a, a very different aspect of healing than the more scientific. I know the last one was about heart and omegas. At least I could discern that from what I could see. And the journey is a healing method that was originally born from my own direct living experience of healing from a basketball sized tumor in only six and a half weeks time. And I had been like many of you here uh, watching this in the field of complementary medicine and integrative medicine, my entire adult life. And I was 39 years old at the time, and I was living, breathing, doing all the work uh, you know, that I'd been certified in so many different areas. And the last thing I ever expected to have happen was for my own tummy to start to grow. And, and it really sent me on this profound, life-changing and radical healing journeys. And one of the gifts of my own healing journey is I found a method for all of us to get to the emotional corollary of what is co-creating the illness, to get access to something that is called cell memories. And for those of you in the field, you're probably up to date with what's happening in the field of cellular healing. And as you know, science has found that when we feel a strong emotion and we repress it, it releases a quantifiable biochemistry into our bloodstream, which will go to certain cell receptors and block them, rendering those cells incapable of communicating with the rest of the cells in the body. And if over time illness happens, it obviously it happens where the cells are blocked. And conversely, what's also known to be true is that when we feel our emotions very naturally, you know, like a child does, our cell receptors remain open. And so the gift of my own healing journey was I was at that time living, breathing, doing everything that was available out there. And there was, had been a lot of research being done in the field of cellular healing at that time. And I can remember walking out of my surgeon's office and she'd given me this rather dire prognosis. <laughs> And she, I had begged her uh, after she said there was a, a, a mass the size of a, a basketball there. I, and that I was bleeding internally. And I said, listen, I'm trained in medical hypnosis and NLP. I'm a master herbalist in homeopathy. I'm a kinesiologist, studied acupuncture and in all these areas. And if I could get the bleeding to stop over the next three days, how much time? can you give me? And she said to me after a 40 minute discussion, and she was a surgeon who also practices integrative medicine. She said that she would give me exactly, if I could get the bleeding to stop over the next three days, exactly a month's time to give it my best shot. And because I was already doing all those things, I was aware that I was being called to go beyond what was available out there. And I can remember I was holding the hand of my best girlfriend and we were walking out of the surgeon's offices and I'm a New Yorker, but I ended up moving from New York to LA. And so we were in downtown LA and I walked out of her, her clinic and my heart was thumping through the roof and my mind was going a million miles a minute. And I'd already tried everything and nothing had worked. And so my mind was almost spinning out of control at having gotten, get, you know, getting a prognosis like that. And I remember walking out of her, her clinic and I looked up and in front of me, there was a mimosa tree. A, son, a tree I hadn't even noticed going into her clinic and it had golden blossoms like golden rain. And when I looked up to this tree, I was absolutely stunned, arrested by the beauty of this tree. And my racing thinking mind that was going a million miles a minute 
started just to fall away into the background and time stopped. And I had what was classically called a Sartori moment where time just stopped and out of nowhere, waves of gratitude started pouring through me. Gratitude just to see this beautiful tree and to smell the fragrance I hadn't smelled going into the, the clinic. Gratitude for just being allowed to breathe, to have a body to experience this life in. And as I was stopped and arrested in this timeless moment, out of nowhere came a gut knowing. Somehow, I would be guided to heal. And even though I didn't have a clue what that was, because I was already at the cutting edge of what was happening in the field of complementary medicine, having been certified in all those fields and being a therapist myself, I was so grateful at that time in 1992 for the whole field of cellular healing. And specifically at that time for the work of Dr. Deepak Chopra, who at that time, he was not the guru he's become today. He was a chief medical uh, surgeon working in a hospital in Boston, and he had done a radical thing as a medical doctor. He decided that he would study people who had healed from serious illness without drugs or surgery. And the reason this was so radical at that time was because it didn't matter if you were in the complementary field or if you were in the orthodox medical field, we were all trained the same way look at the symptoms that lead to ill health and ultimately that lead to death. So we were always focused on what makes people die, what makes people fail. But Chopra said, we know enough about that. I want to know what makes people heal without any kind of intervention. And he amassed hundreds and ultimately over time, thousands of case study of people who had healed without drugs or surgery. And he, could find, he found that there were only two qualities that those people had in common. One was that through some act of grace or spontaneous event, they actually got access to this that he called the infinite intelligence. The part of you that makes your heart beat and your eyes shine and your hair grow. And the second thing that spontaneously they somehow got access to was the, what he called the phantom cell memories. And of course, you know this about the cells in the body that they're all replicating at various speeds. So for instance, if you're looking at you know, skin cells and you have a suntan, you'll notice that, well, that tan fades in about three weeks time. That's because the old cells slough off and are replaced by new regenerative cells. You know, the liver cells take six weeks to regenerate stomach lining less than three days. And the one that just blows my mind always are the eye cells because, you know, that it is said that the inner eyeball is an all new inner eyeball in less than 48 hours, in less than two days. And it was so hard for me to even wrap my mind around that. And yet my mother had one of those eye operations, you know, where they cut the eye open, insert a lens, put the flap back on and put a patch on. And only a day and a half later, they took off that patch. As a matter of fact, what they said was there would not be a single molecule a year from now that was here today. But Chopra was asking a question no one else was asking at the time. He asked, well, why is it if you look at a liver that's riddled with cancer in January, why would it be riddled with cancer in June? If it's completely all new regenerative cells or re replicated cells every six weeks. And what he postulated at that time, which has only subsequently been verified by scientists all around the world, working for Russian military, for American military, is that stored inside that degenerative cell are these old repressed cell memories where you know you were at a peak of a strong experience, no one gives a manual, how do you deal with that? And what do we do? 
we shut it down. We swept it under the carpet. We pretended it wasn't happening. We got on with our lives. And when we were at the peak of that experience and we repressed that emotion, it released that biochemistry with, that went to those cell receptors. And that, that emotional pattern, that cell memory got stored in that cellular location. And before those cells died, they passed on their consciousness, their programming. They passed on those old cell memories to the next cell generation. So the next cell generation was then born as an exact replica of the previous cell generation. And this was going on all the time. And what Chopra was saying was that through some acts of spontaneous grace, people somehow got access to the consciousness that was stored inside the cells. And if somehow they went through a process of release and letting go, that when the new cells were born, they were born devoid of that old consciousness as new regenerative cells. Now, I knew all that at the time. <laughs> Not only had I, was I at the cutting edge of what was happening in the field of complementary medicine, but I had studied with Chopra. I saw what was going on in the field of epigenetics and all that was going on at that time. And I would even viewed some of these case studies. But I can tell you something, you can know all the science on the planet and understand how cells replicate and pass on the, the emotional programming from one cell generation to the next. But unless you have a method, it is no more than a bunch of very inspirational statistics written on a page. And that's where I stood when I looked up at that mimosa tree and time stopped. And I got this gut knowing somehow I would be guided to heal. And even though I didn't have a clue how that would be, I was so grateful that I had all these examples of people who had gone before me, who had spontaneously healed. And I knew if I, only one person had healed cellularly, it meant it was anatomically possible for us as human beings. And so it threw me on and plunged me into the field of the unknown. And I ended up being guided. And part of the gift of the way, and I still to this day feel it was a download from grace, is I found a method for all of us to go on a very practical healing journey, where you can go on a journey inside your body to specific cellular locations, and really not only uncover the exact cell memory stored there, but go through a deep and profound process of releasing the stored consciousness, releasing the stored pain that's there, coming to a place of understanding of what's taken place to you in your life and ultimately coming to a place of forgiveness. So that when new cells are born, they're born devoid of that old consciousness. And what has been so interesting to me, and of course that was 28 years ago that that happened. And, it, uh, I ended up doing a process that led me to uncover the exact emotional root cause of what had co-created the tumor in the first place. As a matter of fact, when I went to the doctor and she did practice integrative medicine, like many of you do here, she said to me, you know, this probably started as one cell when you were eight years old or sometime around that time and it duplicated. And for the last six weeks of my journey, my tummy went from being just a little bit, you know, it started to grow to, it looked like I was about six months pregnant. And it's because it, they started to grow and replicate aggressively and exponentially. And so I, this method for uncovering the emotional root cause of what is co-creating the surface presentation of the of the illness is was the great huge gift of my own healing journey and it was six and a half we, weeks later that I ended up 
in Cedar sinai Hospital there in Los Angeles. And they, the surgeon, she took uh, 38 pictures of my uterus and then she showed me a, a textbook of a 16 year old's uterus. And I was nearly 40 years old at that time. And she said, look at this, Brandon, your textbook perfect clean, absolutely tumor free. I mean, you've got the uterus of a 16 year old. And back then I inside, of <laughs> but externally, of course, and being a, a cool New Yorker, I would never be so uncool. And, uh, and I said, oh, that's wonderful news. And I can remember when I got outside Cedar Sinai Hospital, I was just standing there. And once again, time stopped and I was overwhelmed with waves of gratitude. And through my own healing journey, I had realized what to do if spontaneously people come up with cell memories. But I still hadn't found a way of how to help people open into the infinite intelligence. Even though that had happened to me so many times where I'd opened into this field of awareness of love, where I felt that I was part of the fabric of the universe. And I was guided by that infinite intelligence to the place where the cell memories were stored. And so I put out a prayer that I, I would be guided. And three months later, I was guided and I put together what I knew about what to do if spontaneously a cell memory comes up. And I put it together with what I had learned about how to open in a very direct, practical way, not as just a passing experience of meditation, but as a sustained, direct realization of your own infinite self. The self that makes the heart beat and the eyes shine and the hair grow. And I put together these two teachings that I'd learned through my own direct experience. And I began doing case studies over the next year, year. And I began to see what worked. And I also saw what didn't work. And out of that year, I worked with people with all kinds of physical issues from heart disease, to arthritis, to eczema, asthma, to uh, tumor, brain tumors, to, to uh, heart disease. And of course, not every person healed, but it, it, it was as a, a quite an amazing time for me as I found that the journey could be used to a huge healing effect to a great portion of those who were also doing other uh, healing methods. And it's why the journey is so widely used. Uh, it's being used by oncologists in, in medical hospitals and by uh, doctors who perform heart surgery. It's being used uh, by uh, people who are, are in hospital for um, multiple sclerosis to help get to the emotional root cause. And I also, during that year, worked with people who had all kinds of emotional issues, from jealousy to betrayal to low self-worth. And again, it seemed no matter what our backgrounds were, when no matter what our beliefs were, it seemed each person was capable of going down through the emotional layers and opening into the infinite intelligence, into this vast field where you feel yourself be part of the whole universe. And each person was capable of turning the torch on inside, the flashlight on inside and going on their own healing journey and finding out what their body had to reveal to them, going through their own process of understanding and releasing and forgiving, so that when new cells were born, they were born devoid of that old consciousness as new regenerative cells. And so I be first began working and I had, uh, there was a great thirst for the journey because in Britain, because I was going there and I was giving seminars and there was a journalist who had an enormous um, healing experience and put her whole healing experience into the Sunday Times in Britain. And it became an overnight sensation. 
and I began to be invited to go speak at um, cancer centers all around Britain and to welcome people to use the journey right alongside, they might even be getting chemotherapy and they would be using the journey to get to the emotional corollary. So to help people participate in their own healing journey. And I'm sure that you're aware that there in Israel, there are three different hospitals, one that's using in their oncology unit, the journey in their recovery center, where you go into the integrative uh, center for a, a week and you do the journey and the whole program is centered around the journey to get to the emotional root cause of what has co-created the illness. And also you will do other uh, complementary medical treatments while you're there. To this day, I still do all the other uh, complementary treatments. And so they also have a, another, do, another hospital that works with um, heart patients and another one that works with the multiple sclerosis patients. And I found it was an interesting thing. And I think you as colleagues would are very familiar, you probably are familiar uh, with what's happening in the field of epigenetics. But for those of you who aren't as familiar with it, as of course, since the 1950s, we've known that for instance, if a friend of yours goes to an oncologist and they've been diagnosed with breast cancer, what's the first question that the doctor asks? Well, the doctor asks, who in your family had cancer? because we've known that the propensity for certain illnesses gets passed on genetically through the generations. And we've known that for many decades, but in the last two decades, there's the field of epigenetics and they have found unequivocally that not only do the, does the propensity for specific illnesses get passed on through your DNA, but the emotional traumas that your parents your grandparents and your great grandparents lived through up to four generations prior to your birth, that what they live through in their lives as emotional trauma has been passed down to you through their DNA. And I first learned the truth of this where I was at my very first, it was 2003, I was giving a journey intensive in um, Germany, in München in Munich. And uh, on the second day, we undergo something called the physical journey where you actually get access to these cell memories. And one man uh, raised his hand, he was sharing what his physical journey was like. And he, he had gone inside of his heart and he said, Brandon, I don't have any heart problems that I'm aware of. He said, but I was post, born post-World War II, like nearly everybody in the room. And he said, my mother, she was in the concentration camps in World War II. But when I was born, she went, Stum. we don't talk about what happened in World War II. And this is very common that they just don't talk about what happened during the Holocaust. And he said, so I never knew what my mother went through in the concentration camps. But when I went inside my heart, in living color, what she lived through in that concentration camp came pouring out of me in a very lucid way. I went through living it through with her and had to actually release all her terror, her devastation, the pain, the sorrow, all of it. I had to go through a process of releasing all that and kind of understanding of what took place for her and ultimately, to forgive life for this incredibly hor horrific circumstance. And he says, you know, but Brandon, ever since I was born, even though I didn't know prior to this moment what happened to my mother, it's like I've had this lid over my life. And she, he said, it's like, I, because I was born post-World War II, I did not have permission to be silly and joyous, to make mistakes, be carefree. I just always had this lid of seriousness where I had to be perfect at everything I did. I couldn't afford to make a mistake. And I asked, well, how many of you in this room, and, and there are about 240 people in the room at the time. And I asked, how many of you feel like this, that you have 
you know, you were born post World War II, and some of you got this lid over your life. Like you don't have permission just to be enthusiastic and joyous and crazy and carefree. And every single person raised their hand. And then I looked up at my life and I realized that I was the same as all of them, even though I'd grown up in New York in a country that was all about freedom to be all that you're capable of being. My mother was uh, grew up in, in Vienna, Austria, and her father was put into a Nazi prison and then shot through the head, and, and her husband was shot down by the Luftwaffe. And like she ended up marrying an American sh soldier coming to New York, and I was born post-World War II, and like this man, my mother had gone stumm. We don't talk about this. And... I realized that I had grown up with a lid over my life and that I wasn't just going to serve in Europe to bring an awakening and healing to the Europeans, that indeed I was there for my own healing. And the truth of the matter is I get a journey process once a week when I'm on tour. And that's been the case for the last 26 years. Because I never want to be so arrogant as to say I've got it all handled. I know there's more than one issue stored inside this body. And I feel it's a privilege to clear whatever blocks me, whatever holds me back, whatever has shut me down on any level of being. And so I'm really thrilled that people around the world are using this. And my prayer is that they use the journey before it manifests as illness down the line. You know, when world, when um, we had the Twin Towers go down in 9-11 and the American government did an inter interesting thing. They decided they would follow those who lost their loved ones in the Twin Towers going down. And 10 years later, the results were published in the New York Times in New York City. And the results were that those who lost their loved ones in the Twin Towers, none of them gave them a manual. How do you deal with that kind of trauma? What did they do? They shut it all down, swept it on the carp under the carpet, got on with their lives. And they had an enormous, off the Richter scale, cancer. Why? No one gave them a manual. How to deal with that trauma. And so the journey method is that manual that we all need, especially during this wild time of COVID. And so my prayer is, is that people in watching this um, decide, you know what, I'm going to give myself a wake up call now. And I'm not going to wait for it to manifest 10 years down the line in 2011, as it happened with those guys in New York, as some serious illness. And what have you got to lose but a bunch of baggage? And so as was suggested earlier, I uh, someone mentioned that the journey intensive is happening in uh, Israel in December. And I pray you get there and you undergo this work. It's very deep work. It's extremely liberating work. And it's work that you can use in your daily life with your loved ones. and in your practice with your, your beloveds. And it's really work to really get to the emotional root cause of what is co-creating our illnesses. And it's also work to come home to a deep sense of peace and well-being in your life. And I feel we can all use this deeply healing work alongside of our, our beautiful other work that we're doing. And so I pray that by hook or crook, by crook, you can somehow get there. What's so amazing about the online version is that the, um, we have this whole trainer team of journey practitioners where once you've gone through the teachings, you'll go into breakout rooms and you will pair up with a partner of your own choosing. And then at that time, you will uh, have a trainer come in and into your private room. And if, as you're undergoing this profoundly liberating work, 
if you have any questions at all, you raise your hand and a trainer will go right in there to support you. So it's deep work, it's practical work, and it's life-changing work. And I pray that somehow you can get there. And so, uh, you know, check out, I think it's here. You can read it. I can't read it. <laughs> we, 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 will, we will send it along. You after, you'll send it along. And, and thank you so much for such an inspiring talk. It was wonderful to hear you. Uh, we don't have uh, much time left for questions, I think. Uh, but I can tell you that our chat is full of messages to you, how amazing you are and how everyone recommends joining the journey. And thank you. Thank you so much from all of us. Oh, thank you so much. And just shalom and blessings to everyone. And I pray that this conference gets out to everyone in your field and your colleagues and that together we can serve humanity during this quite crazy time that we're living in. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you very much.